Hi folks, my name is Greg Turner, the radiology coach. My job is to demystify the enigmatic world of x-rays. There are some circumstances within the practice of medical imaging where patients may need to be restrained or immobilized. The reason will vary, but it must be understood that there is a clear and concise line between restraining a patient for their safety as well as others and immobilizing a patient to optimize examination images. Patients' rights dictate that individuals receiving medical care are protected under federal law against any form of abuse or retaliatory actions from medical staff. A restraint is any manual method that limits a patient's freedom of movement, normal access to their body, or capability of operating independently. This manual method can be a physical one, whether by use of force from one's body, physical or mechanical devices, material or equipment, or seclusion. In some cases, even drugs can be used to incapacitate patients. It includes out of the ordinary circumstances that are not protocol for normal diagnostic tests or medical treatment, not part of a procedure that a patient or legal guardian has consented for, not utilized to promote patient function. Reasons why a patient might require restraint might be violent outbursts, aggression towards other patients or medical staff, a tendency to hurt oneself, removing or damaging medical devices or equipment intended to treat the patient, and involuntary or unconscious actions that can cause harm to one's self. A restraint order must be submitted by a physician or certified caregiver in written form and submitted as part of the patient record. It cannot be recorded as a standing order or as needed basis. It must include the following, the form of restraint required, the time frame in which the restraint is necessary. It is also advisable that the provider document the incident, including the specific reasons why the patient required this and alternatives that were attempted prior to the order. There is usually a timeline associated with the restraint order. The restraining of the patient is only legal during the time frame provided on the order. If the order was initiated by a nurse or PA under the guidance of a physician, then the attending must be consulted ASAP. Implementation must be in accordance with state law. Patient holding has surfaced as a form of restraint when applied in a restrictive manner against a patient's desire. It is particularly an area of concern when addressing the pediatric or youth population. For patients of this age, patient holding isn't regarded as a restraint, but proper judgment and practices must be adhered to. Adolescents lack maturity or foresight in some circumstances which may warrant carefully implemented holding tactics. They may also suffer medical conditions that require this approach. When verbal commands prove to be ineffective, medical staff may need to hold or position a patient when there is extreme, disruptive, self-injurious behavior, particularly when this is a result of such afflictions as drug influence, head injury, cerebrovascular injury, multiple traumas, or acute psychiatric disorders. Medical staff must avoid inciting practices like headlocks, painful arm bars, or dangling a patient from their arms or legs. Proper approaches involve mobilizing patients by containing their arms or legs with strategic body maneuvers. Seclusion is a highly different approach. It entails a patient being placed in a safe, confined environment to limit access to open areas to prevent them from hurting themselves or others. This does not include legal confinements where patients are in police custody or legally confined to a holding cell. As for patient immobilization, it is a far different circumstance than patient restraints. Patient immobilization is a method used by medical staff to position a patient in order to achieve maximum results from a test. During radiographic examinations and radiation therapy treatments, patients are required to hold very still during the administration of photons. This is because when the patient moves, it can create problems including blurred x-ray images and inconsistencies. Patients volunteer to be immobilized or at least understand and comply 
comply with the process. They are often immobilized on examination tables with sheets or covers, positioning devices, or Velcro straps. The healthcare staff articulate exactly what they are doing and why they are doing it. They make certain that there are no parts of the patient's anatomy that are restricting breathing or blood flow. Patients are repeatedly checked on during the procedure to assess their status. We cannot complete this discussion without addressing the patients that refuse to be touched or immobilized and they are clearly lucid without extenuating health issues. Patients do have the right to refuse treatment and also to refuse immobilization for procedures. At this juncture, staff should default to the attending physician, who is the only authority to determine the mental status of a patient. Radiology personnel must respect their clients and leverage their training during these complicated circumstances. Patient restraint and control has been a part of medical care since its beginnings, but in a culture that is extraordinarily litigious or highly sensitive to methods of contact, Radiology personnel must pursue their due diligence in managing these situations. That concludes this segment on When Patients Go Crazy. If you like this presentation, please select the subscribe button below this video. You can also tap the bell next to it so that we'll notify you when other great videos have posted. My name is Greg Turner, and I'm the Radiology Coach. And remember, mark my word and mark your films.